I've spent over $1,000 on cloud certifications, 300 hours of studying, and the result, nothing. Zero job offers, no interviews, and it sounds crazy, right? Aren't certifications supposed to be the gateway to a six-figure job? Isn't this what companies are looking for in 2025? The truth is, you have been lied to. I'm Suleiman, I've worked in tech for a decade and I've built my own AI cloud security consultancy. And through my academy, I've trained more than 400 students with my first principles blueprints for engineers, all without a single certification. In this video, I will reveal the five reasons why you shouldn't get cloud certifications. And by the end, you will know exactly what to do instead. Starting with reason number one, certifications create a psychological barrier. Now, let me explain. You decide that you want to get into the cloud. First thing you do is Google how to get a cloud job and what pops up certification paths. So what happens next? You start watching certification prep videos. Maybe you buy a mini course guide. You tell everyone that you're studying for them, but weeks and months go by and you never actually book the exam. You are stuck in this preparation mode. Why? Well, because the industry has convinced you that there's a specific order that you need to do things in. You have to get certified, apply for a job, and then you start your career. And I see this trap claim about 80% of people trying to break into the cloud because they never get around to building the actual skills that employers care about in 2025. But what if you actually push through and get certified? Well, reason number two, certifications drain your most valuable asset. And no, I'm not referring to money. I'm talking about something that none of us can get back time. Certs are an expensive time trap with very little return on investment. Most people spend about two to three months studying for each exam. That's a hundreds of hours of your life memorizing multiple choice questions that could have been spent building actual projects that impress employers. Now, when I'm hiring for my consultancy, I skip straight past the certification section on resumes. And most hiring managers that I've spoken to do the same thing. And the brutal truth, the industry makes millions convinced you that their exams are the gateway to your dream job. But in 2025, employers are looking for something completely different. And I'll explain exactly what you should do instead. But first, you should know that certifications create a full sense of expertise. And I remember when I passed my AWS Solution Architect professional exam, I felt like a genius. But when I faced my first real migration project, the reality hit me like a truck. So let me burst your bubble because to be honest, someone has to. Passing an exam doesn't mean you know how to build and manage cloud infrastructure. You might be thinking, well, why? Because with multiple choice options, there's always a correct answer. In the real world, there are infinite possibilities with complex trade-offs, and that's the problem certifications train you to memorize the answers, not to think through the problems. And in today's job market, that's a recipe for rejection. Now, you might be thinking, okay, Suleiman, I get it, but surely they teach me valuable skills right? No, because they completely ignored the one skill that you spend a lot of your time using, troubleshooting. And let me paint a realistic picture of working in the cloud. Things break, services go down, security threats emerge. And when they do, no single multiple choice question is going to save you. Certification exams test your knowledge of how things should work in an ideal world, but they rarely test your ability to figure out why things aren't working, which is what you're actually paid to do. And reason number five, and perhaps the most significant, certifications teach you about individual services and not how to build integrated solutions. A real cloud architect doesn't just know about every feature of EC2 or Lambda or S3 or VPC. They understand how these services work together to solve business problems. I once interviewed a candidate with four AWS certifications who couldn't explain how data would flow between services in a simple free tier architecture. He knew everything about each service individually, but nothing about how things work together. And this is why I see certified candidates fail interviews again and again. They can't think holistically about cloud solutions because certifications have trained them to think about services in isolation. So, 
Now that you understand why certifications won't get you hired, what should you do instead? Now, after a decade of working in tech, delivering multi-million dollar projects, I noticed something unusual, a gap in how engineers were being trained because even people with years of experience weren't great engineers. And that's when I developed a completely different system from scratch, my own personal methodology designed to create not just great engineers, but world-class problem solvers who can thrive in any technical environment. And this isn't theory. My first principles blueprint for engineers has allowed me to quit my nine to five job and work for myself. This system has helped me build multiple tech businesses and given me the freedom that I've always wanted. It's the same principles my students like Jay, Mac, John, and Matthew are leveraging to get hired in today's job market, including at AWS. Yes, that's right. Amazon are hiring my engineers. My first principles blueprint for engineers is built on three pillars. And starting with pillar number one, technical excellence. Here is where almost everyone goes wrong. They immediately dive into certification prep or start watching AWS tutorials without understanding what is actually happening beneath the surface. They're focusing on the wrong skills from day one. To build true technical excellence, you need to understand three things, networking, Linux, and operating systems. Once you've built this foundation, you want to focus on mastering these AWS services, and I call them the core four. EC2, S3, VPC, and IAM. You don't want to spread yourself too thin trying to learn every single AWS service. You want to focus on the core four because they make up virtually every single project that you build. And speaking of which, you can't just build projects by clicking around the AWS console, even though some influencers will tell you that. In the real world, as an engineer, you have to learn infrastructure as code and use tools like Terraform or CloudFormation to create reproducible version-controlled environments. That said, technical excellence on its own isn't enough. You have to combine it with pillar number two, engineering leadership. And no, this doesn't mean that you need to manage a team. It's about approaching problems with ownership and demonstrating a solution-oriented way of thinking. A lot of aspiring engineers limit themselves to following tutorials step by step. While that can teach you the basics when you're starting out, it limits you to projects that look identical to everyone else's. And it doesn't build your understanding of what's actually happening under the hood, which we'll touch on with pillar number three in just a moment. But that said, building projects isn't just about documenting their technical implementation, but it's also about your decision making process. When you build something, note the alternatives that you've considered, why you've made specific architectural choices and how you've balanced priorities like performance, cost, and security. For example, when I'm interviewing candidates, I often ask about a time when something that they built didn't work as expected. And the best engineers can articulate their debugging process, the lesson that they learned, and how they implemented a solution. And there's one more thing that the best engineers in the world have in common. First, principles thinking. This is the ability to break complex problems down to their fundamental truths. Look, if you want to get on top, you can't just rely on what everyone else is doing. Think about what Elon Musk did with Tesla and SpaceX. He didn't follow the conventional playbook. NASA thought reusable rockets was impossible to produce. It hadn't even crossed their minds. In the same way, most people default to the, this is typically how we do things. So I'm going to do it that way too. But you have to ask yourself, what are we really trying to solve? What happens if this component fails? What's our actual usage pattern going to be? The truth is most engineers, even with five to 10 years of experience, have been trained to follow the same patterns and the same best practices. It feels safe and it's what everyone else does. But the best engineers think from first principles because they can see things in a way that no one else can. And when you understand this, you start seeing trade-offs differently. A first principles cloud engineer isn't memorizing solutions. They are grasping fundamentally why those solutions work. So the big question is, should you get cloud certifications? Now look, I'm not saying that they're completely worthless. They give you a small amount of credibility, but you don't want credibility. You want to actually get hired. Focus on the fundamentals, build projects, document exactly what you are building and think from first principles. And then when it comes to the interview process, you'll be over prepared if that's even possible. That said, you need to know exactly what skills a cloud engineer needs in 2025. So click right here and watch my complete roadmap to learn what it takes to land a six figure job.